Cross Park. Good to be with you virtually. Um, today I wanted to talk about hope. Um, why hope? Well, I think we talk uh, a fair amount about uh, disordered loves, disordered um, desires. But the Lord in the last couple months has showed me my hopes are disordered. And it's not necessarily that I'm hoping for wrong things, but I'm hoping for um, for things not in the right intensity or in the right um, order. And um, so let's let's talk a little bit about biblical hope. So first, a couple definitions. So hope, um, in the general sense, is an anticipation of a future that's better than the present. Christian hope is a sure and confident expectation in God's future faithfulness and presence. So we could really say that hope is basically uh, faith in the future tense. Uh, we heard a great sermon, Easter sermon on 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, what a fantastic passage. Um, and... In 1 Corinthians 15, there's all these contrasts about earthly bodies, heavenly bodies, natural bodies, spiritual bodies, first Adam, last Adam, Adam, man of dust, man of heaven. Um, and then uh, Paul also talks about the resurrection of the body in terms of seed and plant. So imagine for a minute that we live in a world where all we've seen are seeds. That's all we know. We don't know much about the plant or the tree part. And we're told that the seed, a seed is going to become resurrected. I think we'd be tempted to say that mm, this seed is going to be, you know, better there's gonna it's gonna be more thin around here you know this this crack's gonna be gone it's gonna be more effective it's gonna get into the soil better um, but we're tempted to do the same thing uh, with uh, when we think about the resurrection of our body I think we can we can trivialize it some by talking about in terms of fitness or vanity or thinking when I get to heaven I'm gonna be Patrick 2.0 I'm gonna have more energy like Dan Emmons I'm gonna be able to uh, maybe I'll look a little bit more like Brad Pitt um, but the fact is I'm not gonna be a seed anymore I'm gonna be a tree or a plant um, the other part of this metaphor or analogy that I love is that um, the seed has to go into the ground and be broken down in order to become new and beautiful and glorious. And at the end of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul is so sure of his bodily resurrection that he taunts death, that he says, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Because he's so sure that death is now, for those who have victory in Christ Jesus, death is now a gardener. First John 3, 2 says, says it this way, what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. So how shall we be like Jesus in the new heavens and new earth? Well, at least three ways. We'll, we'll be like him in his immortality. We'll be like him in his body. And we will be incapable of sinning. It's interesting that this verse also links our physical resurrection to being able to see God. And this is really 
our greatest hope, that we will have bodies and eyes that are fit to gaze upon God. What is that going to be like? To see him in his beauty, to see him in his transcendence, to see all of life in the light of his presence. There, for his people, we will finally have no other gods before him. There will be no more darkness or sorrow in our hearts. Jonathan Edwards says it this way, The pleasure of seeing God is so great and so strong that it takes the full possession of the heart. It fills it to the brimful, so that there shall be no room for any sorrow. There is no darkness that can bear such a powerful light. And I think of uh, the great blessing in Numbers that, that Aaron, Aaron gives, that he says, make his face shine upon you. And the truth that for his people, that will be true, that his face will shine upon you. And that's our greatest hope. That's the, our future for all those who are in Christ. And imagine with me that in the new heavens, new earth, we will live with full joy. We will be at rest finally with ourselves. We'll be at rest with the people around us. We will be at rest with our God, enjoying the bounty of a resurrected world. So that cross part, that's my encouragement for you today, is to, sure, hope Hope in the little things, um, but make sure that, that you hope in the best things. You know, hope that we will have relief from sin and sorrow. Hope that we will have new glorious bodies. And think about seeing the face of our Lord. Let's pray. Father, you tell us to think about what's pure and holy and beautiful and glorious and nothing is as pure holy and new and, or and beautiful and glorious as you so father help us to dwell on our resurrection and and, uh, and being with you in your presence father help us to be heavenly minded that we're of earthly good Father, would you um, allow us to walk in the good works that you prepared in advance for us to do today with joy, um, that we would be at peace as we fix our eyes firmly on you. In Jesus' name, amen.